probably couldn't read that, but that said Toledo, South Toledo Street. Got the butter. So I'm listening to the radio. <laughs> I listen to the radio. I like I like getting the information for the day. They're calling for two to three feet in the southern Denver area. They're calling for six feet of snow in the northern foothill area. And they're calling for three to four feet of snow in the Genesee area along I-70, which is the road that I use to drive back to Denver. Not today. I think it's Saturday, more like a Saturday late Friday, Saturday, Sunday situation. Whoa, that's the real deal. What does that mean? We got to run. We got to get the, we got to get the volume in before we're, you know, running around in our snowshoes. Oh my my, that's a lot of snow, everyone. It's only 7 a.m. and there's already uh, 150 comments on yesterday's blog all about the running watches. So just so everybody knows, I do have a Koros watch don't even remember which one it is. If anybody knows, let me know in the comment. I can't remember. And then there's the Polar. And then I have a Sun 2, so I'm not beholden to no one. I'm willing to test anything, uh, but I've never been sent a Garmin. And everybody says I got to try Garmin, so who knows? Maybe, go let me know, Is Garmin? does Garmin have to be the next running watch that I test out for all of you? Okay, here it is. Oh man, I've, I've never opened this box. Okay, this is the under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. I don't know what they look like. I'm not saying I'm going to take these out on my run today, but I am gonna open them up right now with all of you. Oh, whoa. Crazy Under Armour, crazy. I must say, my first thoughts out of the box is I'm kind of intrigued. Interesting. I'm definitely intrigued Under Armour. Very intrigued, but I'm not going to take them out for this long run. You know what it is? It's the outsole. That's why I, I just, I think I'm going to run into some snow and ice out there and I can sense it just, it doesn't feel like it's going to give me really great grip on the ice and the snow. So I am going to take out with the Goodyear rubber on the bottom, the Skechers Razor XS. There it is. All right. So kind of maximalist shoe from Skechers, Skechers Razor Excess. Oh my my, <laughs> just gut, like gut reaction, foot sliding into the shoe for the first time is nice. Oh, that feels, it's like, you know when a shoe fits like a glove? That is interesting, okay, okay. See doorknob. Okay. Man, I feel amazing. It's crazy. Okay, 
mathematicians out there, help me out. I thought I heard in a book recently, a running book called Endure, that up here at 10,000 feet above sea level, I'm curious to know what is the percentage of oxygen that, like the decrease in oxygen from sea level up here to 10,000 feet. And if you really have time, what is it at 14,000 feet? I thought I heard like between 15% or 20% less oxygen up here in Leadville compared to sea level. If you could help me out, Matt, all you wizards out there, I would appreciate it. Thank you, so does that make sense? Okay, about six miles in, here we go. End of the line. Not gonna make it to the Mount Ober Trailhead today. I had a feeling that might happen. All right, I'll just go add on somewhere else. Quite nice up here. Ooh, man, seeking beauty. Go home. Go home. No. <laughs> Gotta keep those dogs in check in Leadville, Colorado. <laughs> dog was chasing me. I have learned over time, depending on the dog, don't run. Just get loud and big. Some dogs you can't do that with. You gotta go find a tree. <laughs> Climb up the tree. I couldn't read that, but that said Toledo, South Toledo Street. Just a little reminder to stay focused on the end goal. to the person in their car who just yelled out their window at me, butter my bread, you just made my day. Never in a million years would I have thought that that happened in Leadville, Colorado. Maybe in Denver, but in Leadville. Oh, you rock, you rock. Where, oh, where does the time go? What a busy day at altitude. All right, we're diving into this topic. And yes, if you hear a dog barking in the background, I now have neighbors next door and they brought a dog. They're out to dinner and the dog is barking. So anyway, that's what that noise is. Okay, here's the deal. I'm bringing up this topic, maybe a little bit of a controversial topic or hot take from me to all of you about altitude tents and altitude training. And yes, question of the day, have you ever trained or raced at altitude? And what was your experience like training or racing at altitude? Okay, maybe your team, you know, maybe you live in Kansas and your high school cross country team, you know, drives eight hours or whatever it is, six hours to Colorado to train at altitude every summer. So I get emails and I read the comments about my altitude training here in Colorado. Very fortunate to be able to go from Denver up here to, to Leadville at 10,200 feet above sea level. And my, I, I don't know if it's gonna be controversial. I don't, it's just my opinion. It's my thoughts on altitude tents. And actually it was also, this topic was uh, reinforced today at the grocery store. I was buying some toothpaste and there was a stand at the grocery store today at City Market, they were selling oxygen in tanks. So I guess if you're visiting Leadville and you need some extra oxygen, you can buy these little tanks. Um, to breathe easier up here at altitude. 
My point is this. I, I'm not going to, okay, altitude tents. What are they? For those that don't know, it's this tent you can set up around your bed. And at night when you're sleeping, you can crank it up to different altitudes where it basically sucks oxygen out of the tent. So it mimics as if you're sleeping at altitude. Okay. That's what an altitude tent is. And I don't like it. I just got to be come, come out clean. I don't like the idea. It's to me, it's, it's honestly kind of like Everest and summiting Everest, Mount Everest with oxygen. I'm a purist. And I just think that, um, it takes the, ch the challenge and the sacrifice and the fight out of your training when you are sleeping in an altitude tent rather than getting in your car from Denver, driving up to wherever you're going or wherever you live in the world. And you might say, well, Seth, I live at sea level. Well, that's where the sacrifice comes in. And that's where some athletes actually, I just heard that one of the elite ultra runners in the world just moved. I'm not going to say this person's name, just moved to Leadville. Okay. I, Cause I haven't confirmed it. That's amazing because this person wants to take that. I'm guessing wants to take that next step in their racing, um, uh, by moving to Leadville, living at 10,000 feet above sea level. Unbelievable. And I just, I don't know if I can call altitude tents. You can also buy these devices that you put in your mouth. And when you go running, it makes it harder to breathe, which I'm um, again, I, I think it's a form. I'm not going to call it quite cheating, but I'm going to call it cutting corners. I just, okay. Did I already mention this? The reason I'm bringing this topic up is because I'm getting emails from people about altitude training, altitude tents. What's my opinions. And rather than skirting around the issue down in the comments, I'm just coming out right now and telling you, I'm not a believer. I think like that's what long distance running is all about, and I know this is a little bit of a controversial take, but it's, I think long distance running is all about that sacrifice and that commitment. And that is why I'm just going to say the Kenyans and Ethiopians, very fortunate. They live at 8,000 feet. They train at 8,000 feet and their countries are near the equator. So they can live at high altitude, train at high altitude with decent weather. Um, and that's awesome. So, so anyway, I love you guys. I hope it, this doesn't stir up too much controversy, but at the same time, we're family here. We can talk about controversial topics every now and then here. I almost said in the studio, but we are not in the studio tonight. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. That's my hot take for probably 2021. You know me, I don't do too many hot takes, but I just, uh, that's how that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. All right, everyone, we will toss it to a high altitude training run. Something right there, right there. Pro you know what, we'll do Mount Elbert. That Mount Elbert FKT, right here, right here, which is the tallest mountain in Colorado. Okay, right there, right there, right there. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.